Today, I'm gonna to risk my life in the pursuit of a pretzel. Not just any pretzel though, a German lie-dipped pretzel. Gorgeous, smooth mahogany exterior and chewy, pleasantly dense interior, sprinkled with pretzel salt and served with good butter. Okay, so maybe I was being slightly dramatic. We aren't going to need a full hazmat suit, but we are gonna be working with a highly caustic substance. Lye in solution tops out the pH scale at 14. That is extremely alkaline. It is used to clean drains, and it can do this to a can of soda in just an hour. Whoa. So why on earth would we use it on food? Because extreme alkalis can make some extremely delicious food. Treating dried corn with cal or calcium hydroxide, an ancient process called nixtamalization, is the foundation of masa, the dough that gives us tortillas, tamales, and so much more. The calcium hydroxide initiates many flavor and nutritional changes in the corn. The Chinese thousand-year-old egg is created using various strong alkalis. Again, the transformation is dramatic, as the egg white turns almost black but retains its clarity, and the yolk takes on a deep green color. The flavor is incredibly rich and complex. Even some olives are processed using lye, which works very quickly compared to the salt brine technique, and it allows the olives to retain their natural green color. So what does lye do for a pretzel, you ask? Quite a lot, actually. Dipping the dough in a lye solution gives traditional German pretzels their characteristic salinity, chew, and that smooth mahogany exterior. It boosts flavorful browning by accelerating myotization and caramelizing sugars in the dough. And it gels surface starch, so the pretzels bake up smooth and shiny. But most fascinating of all, in my opinion, is that lye actually completely changes the aroma of baked goods. It imparts that unique pretzel smell and taste by inhibiting the creation of typical baked good aroma compounds while spurring the formation of others. And it's true, smell a pretzel. No, seriously, oh wait, go smell a pretzel. Oh wow, you actually have one right there. Nice. It smells like a pretzel, right? What I mean is it doesn't smell like baked bread or a roll or crackers or anything else. Singular, original pretzel. This result, as I mentioned, is thanks to lye's chart-topping alkalinity. Now, if after watching this video, you don't choose to work with lye, you can still get good results by using baking soda. With a pH of roughly 8.3, it will still change color and flavor. Check out this experiment. This pretzel was dipped in lye before baking, while this one was dipped in a simmering baking soda solution. You can see the color and sheen difference. And the aroma? The lye pretzel is classic, undeniable pretzel. But the baking soda one smells pretty darn good too. Okay, so who's ready to do this? What's that? Oh, you want to know how it's safe to eat a pretzel after dipping in lye. Great question. So any lye left over after the initial reaction with the dough reacts with CO2 and breaks down harmlessly. If you don't believe me, I direct your attention to the country of Germany. Population, 84.5 million. Let's go to the kitchen. I'm making deputy food editor Andrea Geary's obsessively tested recipe, and it all starts with a really simple dough. We'll combine bread flour, table salt, and yeast in a bowl of a stand mixer and stir to combine. We are using bread flour because it has a high gluten potential. That means it contains elevated amounts of glutenin and gliadin, two proteins that come together in the presence of water to form gluten. Gluten is chewy and resilient, and we want pretzels with proper chew. Next, we add water and softened butter and mix on low speed until the flour is moistened, which takes just about a minute. Then we increase the speed to medium low and continue to mix until the dough is smooth and elastic, about six minutes longer. I'll shape the dough into a ball, transfer it to a lightly greased bowl, and then let it rise until doubled, which takes about an hour. Easy peasy, right? Here is our one hour double dough. It has a really nice silky feel to it. After dividing it into six equal portions, I use my hand and the friction of the counter to form each into a smooth ball. After a 10 minute rest under a damp towel, it is time to form our pretzels. Now our goal is to press out as many big air bubbles as possible because a pretzel should have a dense crumb. Big air bubbles inflate in the oven and create big holes. Using my hands and a rolling pin, I flatten the dough into a four by eight inch rectangle. Part of that pretzel chew comes from the shaping method. The more we manipulate the dough, the stronger the gluten network that we can form. So we'll roll the dough into a tight cylinder and pinch the seam to seal. Now we'll roll the cylinders into nine inch ropes. Let them rest a beat, and then roll all the way to 28 inches. Now this might seem challenging, but the dough is so forgiving that it's easy and fun to roll it out this far. Okay, here is where the pretzel shaping magic happens. Now, if you've ever watched a professional make pretzels, you've seen them do it in one seamless motion in the air. That takes some practice, and that's practice that I've never done, ever. But that won't stop me from trying it right now in front of all of you. Let's switch to the counter 
and go nice and slow. We will shape the rope into an inverted U with the ends facing towards us. Then we'll cross the rope ends once and then again. Finally, we lift the ends and attach them to the other side of the inverted U at about 10 o'clock and two o'clock and press the ends firmly into the body of the pretzel. Now we just transfer them to a parchment lined sheet, cover and refrigerate for at least two hours or up to 24 hours. Long cold fermentation like this will develop good flavor in the dough while limiting large bubbles of CO2, which would mess up our otherwise beautiful pretzel appearance. Okay, so now comes the fun part. Lye! Now before working with lye, you will have to read our full guide on doing it safely. There's a link below this video, along with the full recipe. Now while you're down there, make sure you hit that little bell button that needs to be clicked. That one notifies you each time a video of mine drops. All right, so here's my setup. Okay, so now you're more than welcome to go full Breaking Bad with the suit if that's fun for you, you like dressing up, or you wanna scare your family. That's just an option I wanted to present to you but it's really not necessary. The keys here are a well-ventilated room, free of small children and pets, long sleeves, rubber gloves, and safety goggles. I start by covering the counter with plastic wrap. Then I put on my rubber gloves, and finally my goggles. I measure out 40 grams of lye crystals into a small bowl, and then add the crystals to 1,000 grams of cold water in a non-reactive bowl. When lye reacts with water, it actually releases heat, so starting with cool water is key. Check it out. Watch as the temperature of the water climbs as I whisk the lye in. If I kept adding lye, the temperature would keep climbing. This is an exothermic reaction, or one that produces heat or light. And your counter should look like this. An unwrapped sheet of chilled pretzels, a bowl of lye solution, and a wire rack set in a rim baking sheet. And finally, a silicone baking sheet liner in a baking sheet. We'll pick up one pretzel with our gloved hands, pinching where the ends meet the body of the pretzel, and transfer it gently, presentation side down, to the lye. We'll let it soak for just 15 seconds, pressing to keep it submerged. Then we transfer it presentation side up to a prepared wire rack to briefly drain. And then finally, over to the silicone lined sheet. Now it's time for the salt. Ideally, you find pretzel salt for these bad boys. Pretzel salt may look like any other salt, but it's unique in its composition. It's a salt made of compressed, very finely ground salt. That means it will dissolve slower and be nicer to bite into than one solid rock. We sprinkle them all over and bake until deeply browned, about 12 minutes. Psst, PSA. Be sure to read that entire safety document regarding how to clean up your live station. Look at this pretzel. Smell this pretzel. Sorry, I know you can't do that. Taste this pretzel. Again, sorry, I know you can't do that. Still warm from the oven, this pretzel is an experience. It's chewy, tender, and aromatic with that undeniable pretzel smell. The outside is lightly crisp. The pops of salt add flavor and texture. This is so good. It needs absolutely nothing. It's a perfect food. But that doesn't mean I won't add butter. I slice it crosswise as I would a bagel and spread on the butter. Or you can go with mustard and vice versa. Yum. Now, if you're drooling at your screen right now but aren't so sure about lye, I have a couple things to say. One, being in the kitchen is inherently dangerous. We use open flames, 500 degree ovens, sharp knives, and heavy and sharp machinery. We accept some degree of risk in order to eat well. Working safely with lye is no different. And using Andrea Geary's fail-proof recipe and safety guide, again, link below, will get you there. And two, if you choose a lye-free path, my longtime love baking soda will be right there with you. You've seen my episode on baking soda, right? Whatever you choose, I can say with certainty that this is how to eat pretzels. Thank you all so much for watching. I wanna say a big thanks to Andrea Geary for the weeks and weeks of work she put into researching and testing and testing this recipe. Now, my big question for all of you is, are you gonna go lie? Are you gonna become a liar just like me? I really wanna know, so let me know in the comments if your team lie, if you'll never make these in a million years, or if you're gonna go baking soda. And then send pictures, I wanna see these things. All right, thanks a lot, we'll see you next time.